Hey gorgeous. So it has been kind of a crazy week. So I'm just going to start at last weekend. Um, last weekend there was a family get together and sort of out of the blue, I mentioned how, oh yeah, I wanna put my hair into like a half ponytail just to make sure my veil stays in because it's a clip-in and my hair is thin. And I sort of mentioned it to one of my sister-in-laws and she said, oh, do you want me to try and do your hair? And I was like, what? And she said, yeah, what were you, what were you thinking? And I'd actually sent my maid of honor some pictures. And so I had those in my phone. And so I showed her like, oh, it was kind of a, like a braid that kind of just meets in the back. And she said, oh, I can definitely do that. Do you want like a Dutch braid, a French braid? And I was like, I didn't even know there were different kinds of braids. So <laughs> you can do whatever you think will look nice. And she just kind of right there, we were just sitting around the kitchen table and she was right there just started doing my hair and it looked really cute. Like, obviously it wasn't perfect. She'd never done it before, especially like working with my hair is kind of impossible. That's why I just leave it down all the time because I just don't know what to do with it. So my hair just hangs. In past videos, my hair has been parted straight down the middle. And after she tried to do a side braid, and so now it just kind of stays like this. And if I part it the other way, it would stay parted. It just kind of doesn't do what I wanted to do, so I just leave it alone. But she got to look really nice, and she mentioned, oh, if we, if you still have hair down, I could do a curl, and we could do this. And so now, <laughs> for next weekend, I'm going to do a hair trial with her and my maid of honor. We're going to go hang out, and we're going to do that, and maybe some other stuff. We'll see. So that'll be, that's a fun future plan to look forward to. But yeah, now I just kind of have someone doing my hair for me. I still have to do my makeup myself, unless someone just offers to do my makeup for me, which at this point I wouldn't say no, because I haven't been practicing. But that's really cool, and she's she already designed our invitations, which are going out next week. She's just doing so much, and it's so nice of her. She said like, oh, I love doing stuff like this, don't worry about it. <laughs> um, I also asked her husband, my brother, I asked him if he could make an announcement before the ceremony, and he said he would, because... Our officiant is also a groomsman, so he's walking down the aisle with the other groomsmen. So there won't be anyone at the front to be like, hey, the ceremony's starting soon. So I asked my brother if he would do that for us. And I also asked my parents if, if they want to do a speech or what they want to do. Um, Jake's best man doesn't seem too keen on a speech. He said, oh, I'll do it if you want me to, but we don't want to push him to do it if he doesn't want to do it. So I asked my maid of honor and she said, yes, I expected to do a speech, so I'm going to do a speech. And my dad said, oh yeah, I wouldn't mind doing a speech. He's like, I'm going to keep it short and sweet though. You can't really like, don't expect a long-winded thing out of me. And I was like, that's, that's perfect. Thanks dad. And my mom said kind of the same thing. I don't know if they'll just, they'd probably just give a speech together and just be like, thanks for coming everybody, which is fine with me. I'm just like, if you want to talk, I'll give you the opportunity. And if you don't want to talk, you don't have to, is how I'm doing it. Um, so we got that all figured out, which is great. And then that night we looked over, so we have our mini moon trip. We're also planning a trip in August because I have a week off and so Jake took a week off. So our plan for my week off trip, we were going to go down to like Illinois, Wisconsin and just explore, do a little road trip because we don't really explore that area. And for our mini moon, we had our whole like, we're going to go around Lake Superior. But we decided that we're actually going to switch the trips. Like we're a little worried we might get stuck in Canada. Like I don't know how the quarantine process works. Like if we did end up getting COVID, like we're being overly cautious. But, like, if we did end up getting COVID, like, from our wedding or something, and then, like, if we get stuck behind the border or something and can't make it to our friend's wedding. Although, obviously, if we did catch COVID, we just wouldn't go to there anyway. But we're just kind of worried about being stuck in Canada. I don't think they'd actually keep us in Canada. I would assume they'd probably just want us to, like, leave and quarantine at home. Especially if we just, like, stayed in our car and just went. But we don't really know the logistics. So we decided that we were going to do the Superior trip in August and the um the wisconsin illinois trip as our mini moon instead which works out better because then we have more time for the superior trip because otherwise we'd have to like rush to get to our hotel on friday night for our friend's wedding so we didn't we wouldn't have had as much time in canada as we wanted so switching them actually just worked out for the better um we had a meeting with our new venue coordinator that i mentioned last time and she seems to really have her act together I asked her all the questions, just making sure we were on the same page as our old coordinator. And it sounds like everything's A-OK, -okay, going to be totally fine. We even set up our, it's not really our final meeting, because it's still going to be like a month and a half before the wedding. So we're probably going to have to meet with them again before that. But we do have a meeting where we can look at the space and be like, oh, like, do you want a memory table? Do you want, you know, where do you want the cake cutting table? And we just kind of look at the space and tell them what we want. And figure out a few other things. She sent us a questionnaire we need to fill out, but that meeting's not until next month sometime, so we don't have to worry about it just yet. 
but I was very happy that she really seemed to have everything together and she knew what was going on and she actually gave us some prices for things that we didn't know about but that led to the next day where I started freaking out about the open bar again because she told us if we want extra kegs and another keg is like $400 which is like so, so I don't know if it's reasonable or not I've never bought a keg so I'm like well 400 bucks for 160 drinks sounds like reasonable I'm not gonna do the math <laughs> I have a headache right now and I just took an acetaminophen and I'm just I'm not doing it but yeah so I had a little freak out about that and we also want to on top of maybe getting an extra keg we were talking about doing the whole open bar like we'll host for a certain amount of money so she said, oh, for the wedding we're having, like, coming up soon, they did 1500 for, um, for liquor. And then she, it hadn't happened yet, so she didn't know if it would last all night. But it sounds like there would also be, like, taxes and fees. So if we wanted a $1,500 open bar, it would cost 1800 Which, like, we're, we're thinking about it. I just kind of panicked about it. And so Jake texted some of our friends to see what they said. But it's, like, opposite ends of the spectrum. <laughs> like, he texted one of our friends, but for them, their parents paid for the whole thing. So they don't really know the prices of anything. Like, they were originally, they told us to, like, oh, originally, um, you know, like, her dad was gonna do an open bar until 8 o'clock, but then he decided to keep it open all night. But they have no idea how much that cost. And our other friends said they're doing cash bar only. And we, we aren't doing that anyway, because we will have wine and beer it would just be liquor would be cash bar. And then we're thinking of putting more money towards liquor. And we looked up my my brother and sister-in-law, the ones that I was talking about who've been helping us out. They kept their budgeting list and they spent 1700 for alcohol, but they only did wine and beer. So we're like, well, will that even cover enough liquor? Like we have no idea. So we'll see. I talked to my mom and sister about it again after the fact, because of course I did. And they're just like, well, you're providing something. So. I, people can't really be mad about it if you give them something. It's just every other day I feel like a friend or a family member is like, oh, I'm so excited for the open bar, just assuming we're going to have one. And that just makes me freak out because <laughs> I don't want to disappoint people. So like when they say that, I'm like, oh, no, there's not going to be an open bar because I don't want to. I don't know. But I also don't want to be like, oh, yeah, make sure you bring cash because that just sounds. I don't know. It doesn't sound right to say that. It's, it's, it's the biggest, the alcohol is like the biggest struggle for me with this wedding currently. <laughs> I just don't know what to do about it and no one seems to have a straight answer. And then you try to go to the um, estimate websites and they're like, oh yeah, so if you're having a wedding with this many people and the wedding reception's gonna be like six hours, then everybody, everybody there apparently is going to have one drink every hour. So you need like 600 or something drinks and I'm like, Oh God, that is way too many. <laughs> I feel like not everybody's gonna have a drink an hour, but you never know. And I know some people stock their own bars and so I'm sure that's helpful for them. Cause I mean, if you go to Costco and stock your bar and then you have extra, I think you can just return it depending on like, I think Costco lets you do that. Maybe other places do too. So like that would make sense. Like, oh, I have extra, I'll just return it. But we can't do that. Like if we tap a keg and only like two drinks get taken out of it, we still have to pay for the whole keg. They were, they're just like, oh, that's only like eight bucks for like your two beers. And they're like, no, that's $400 for the whole thing. That's too bad. Sorry. Like we can't use the rest of it if you don't use it tonight. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to stop ranting about that. Um, next night, it was actually like our actual planning night. And we read through the ceremony and... <laughs> I actually got kind of annoyed at Jake. Um, it's not really his fault, because I know he's not huge on wedding planning, I get it. So we were reading through the ceremony, which I'd honestly, like, I wrote some of it myself, some of it was just copied and pasted from other ceremonies, because I just, you know, wrote it for our friend who's going to officiate for us. And Jake's like, what's this part? That's weird. And I'm just like, I'll delete it then. Like, <laughs> but he just kept making jokes and doing stuff like that. I'm like, I worked hard on this. like. You don't have to give me crap every time you see something that you think is worded a little funny. Like, you could just say, like, oh, let's just cut that part. I don't think we need that part. Or, I don't know, just, like, not make a joke out of the whole thing. Because it's, like, even when it comes to the, the wedding planning nights, it's, like, I'm the one who, like, for every week until the wedding, I'm the one who wrote down, this is, we need to get this done, we need to get this done. Like, you need to get a suit, and then we need to run through the ceremony, and then we need to make sure our invitations are all done, have the addresses printed, and we have to do this and this and this. Like, I'm the one who figured all of that out. He just has to do it. Like, he just has to, and he doesn't even have to do half of it. He just has to, like, help me or, like, give me some support with it. 
So he's not even like doing the legwork that I've done. Like I've done the legwork and he just kind of has to like help me out. And so like his jokes just were very unappreciated that night because I felt like I'm, I'm doing so much and you can't even just like focus for five minutes on like our ceremony thing, you know? Like I said, I'm not, I'm not mad at him about it anymore. <laughs> I was irritated in the moment and then you get over it because like I realized I was like, yeah, I did do all that work, but I put that on myself and like I am putting the stress on myself and that's not his fault and he's trying to lighten the mood. And just because like my mood didn't align with that, like because other, other times he does that and it's fine and I laugh and it's funny. But that night I was just not in the mood for it, so. Not because I don't want anybody to think Jake sucks because he's a great guy. It just like sometimes our moods don't align and then it makes me irritated when usually it wouldn't. Yeah, gosh, this is like every day something happened. Um, the day after that, I was texting my friend Gabby, who's helping us with the cricket, and she sent me um, Im like images of like, oh, like is this font okay? Is this how you want it to look? And it, it's just saying. Um, I think, I don't remember whose name is first. Is it Stacy and Jake? Or Jake and Stacey? I, for, I honestly forget. But it's just our names. And then under it says, like, established 2022. So she, like, sent, like, eight different images. Like, which one do you like best? And then Jake and I sat down and we actually, like, both, we chose two. And then each of us, one of the two, we agreed on. So we're just like, all right, it's that one then. <laughs> so that worked out really well. And she actually printed it out and it looked amazing. Like, she, she honestly just sent a picture of it. The next day it was my shower, and she was going to bring it to me to the shower, but she wasn't feeling well, so she ended up not being able to make it. Which is a bummer, but I totally understand, and I wasn't going to be like, oh, you gotta come even though you're sick just because you're a bridesmaid. Like, that, that wouldn't have been cool. And I know she feels bad about it, so I'm not going to, like, put salt in the wound. But, you know, I'll see her eventually, and I'll get it eventually, and it'll be fine. But, yeah, it looked really nice in the pictures she sent, and I really just hope she's feeling better. That same day, too, we had, it was Jake's sister's birthday, so we went out to eat, and I gave them their, like, wedding invitations, just so, like, you know, save a little postage, and then also, we're sending, like, the invites to everybody at the end of next week, so we kind of wanted to give, like, family and bridal party a week's notice, like, here, if, you know, they might not look at it right away, but we're like, well, if they hadn't booked a room yet, then they could, like, have all that info a week before everybody else and, like, get that sorted, like, they have a chance. <laughs> Although, to be fair, like I mentioned, my shower was the next day. I should have just given it to them the next day instead of doing it on her birthday, and I feel a little bad about that, so I sort of... I tried... I didn't bring it up the whole night, and just, like, before we left, I just handed them out really quick, and I was like, bye, happy birthday! Because <laughs> I didn't want to take away from her evening, but... I should have just done it at the shower. But then the issue is at the shower, I, there are a few people I forgot to give them to, so, you know, that might not have worked out either. <laughs> I gave them to the people who, like, showed up early before the whole party arrived, but then once the party was there, I just forgot. Um, anyway, the shower, oh gosh, the shower was so fun. <laughs> Brittany had it be a complete secret. So I came early, like an hour early, and she said, no, you're, you stay in the house. <laughs> Because the party was, it was originally going to be out in our yard, um, but we do, we have a giant, like, pole shed, like, with a concrete floor and everything, and we ended up doing it in there instead. We kept the, the shed doors open, but the actual backyard is, like, crawling with horse flies and mosquitoes, so we didn't want to, like, subject people to that. There were still some flies in the shed, but it wasn't nearly as bad as if we'd gone in the actual backyard, so it was a plus choice. Yeah, I, so I didn't get to go in there until my, my grandma and my aunt were the first ones to show up. So I got to go outside when they got there because I went to go say hello, obviously. And <laughs> so I pretty much when they're like, oh, hi, grandma, hi, aunt. And then I was like, wow, this looks amazing. <laughs> Brittany and my sister-in-law, again, helped her out. Oh, it's crazy. She's doing so much to help her. I appreciate it so much. They had set it up like a little like afternoon tea because I've always wanted to do a high tea and I've just never gotten around to it. The tables had pink tablecloths on them and then like little lace doilies in the middle and then on the doilies some had pillar candles and some had like actual teapots and teacups and the teacups had succulents in them. And I was like, this is so cute. And there are a lot of little cards. Right before I'd, I came outside, they brought all the food out. So I kind of saw all the food, but they had like French toast kebabs. They made mini quiches. They had little ham and cheese croissant sandwiches, which, oh my gosh, a croissant sandwich is like A plus food. My sister had baked 
She baked chocolate chip scones, like all this from scratch, chocolate chip scones, um, brownies, and lemon bars. Lemon bars are my favorite. She made a bunch of lemon bars. I brought a bunch home with me. There's so many lemon bars and I am excited. Yeah, there was so much food out there and it was all absolutely delicious. So everything's set up and people are just kind of like slowly trickling in, everybody gets there. And the first thing we do is eat, which was delicious. And then after that, we started the games. I, I know some people don't like bridal shower games or like baby shower games. But I, I think they're really fun and they picked some great games. The first one was um, match the Disney song to the Disney movie, which I aced. Like me, me and all my friends at our table were just like, oh, that was easy. <laughs> And I think my a different sister-in-law won that game. And the next game was Jeopardy. So they actually had a, a big board, you know, 100 through 500. And they had like, so one row was facts about the bride and groom. So my sister's like, you can't answer those. You're not allowed. <laughs> but then some were love stories and marriage facts and I think two other categories. But we all paired up at our tables and we all were a team and we tried to win. Oh, and at that point, so during the first game, um, when my sister-in-law won the gift for the Disney game, my sister gave her a bag, and then she also said, the succulents and teacups on the table are also gifts. So if you win a game, you can take one home. And the, <laughs> my friend Sarah really wanted a teacup and loves plants. So as soon as she heard that, she's like, oh, let's go! And she, <laughs> she was so stoked, and our table did end up winning the Jeopardy. Obviously, I didn't get a prize, but... I was pretty much at the bridesmaid table, so like all of my friends got to grab a teacup and get a gift, and it was really cute. And the next game was my absolute favorite part. There's a game where you ask the groom a bunch of questions, and then I have to try and guess what he says. They did that, and basically the game was that everybody gets to see the question, and they decide, do you think... Jake and Stacy will both have the same answer, yes or no, and they have to circle it. I didn't do as good on it as I thought, but also, the difference was, my sister just, like, messaged Jake the questions in a, in a Google Doc, and he got, he had time to sit and, like, write out and think about his answers, whereas I was put on the spot. So, there were some of them where I was like, oh, Jake had a better answer than me. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, he's right, he's right. <laughs> that was very fun to do. I had a great time. I One of them I just laughed so hard I cried because one of them was, oh, what's something that you, what's something you, the groom, do that really bothers Stacy? And I told Jake, there's a, you know, like a child care trick. Doesn't always work, but sometimes if the kid is really fighting sleep, you can take your hand and kind of just like rub it over their eyes and just kind of like keep doing it because it kind of makes them like close their eyes as like a reflex. And then eventually, like, sometimes they'll just stay closed. It doesn't work on every kid. Like, don't think this is a, a miracle. But it sometimes works. So every so often I try it. I told Jake about that. And now every time I'm just, like, complaining, like, oh, I'm so tired. He'll just do that. He'll just do that over my face. And it makes me so irritated. <laughs> it's one of those things where he does it specifically because it annoys me. But it honestly doesn't annoy me as much as I act like it annoys me. But I'm so used to having that reaction. I just have a big reaction every time. But that one was hilarious, because I said that, and everyone there was like, what? What a weird thing to say. And then Jake had, like, four different pet peeves, and I was like, he's making me seem like a jerk. <laughs> he's like, oh yeah, here's four things she absolutely hates, and I had, like, a fifth one that wasn't even listed. <laughs> and all of his were pretty accurate, too, but they don't, some of the things he thinks annoy me don't annoy me nearly as much as he thinks they do. But I'm not going to go through that whole list, because that's going to take ages, and I'm already talking too much, because... This has been a crazy week. So that game ended and then it was gift opening time, which is always a little awkward, but I was trying just to be like as hype as possible. They also did the wedding bingo where everybody wrote down like, oh, what gifts do you think she'll get? And then they could maybe get bingo. My favorite part of that was on the table where all the gifts were. So there are a few obvious ones because I got, I got a trash can because we needed a recycling bin. I was very happy about that one. And there was one other very obvious one and I just, like, wouldn't pick it. I don't know why. I kept going around it because it was just a small mason jar and it had, like, some money and some bath bombs and some face masks in it. And it was the last gift I picked up. And as soon as I picked it up, a whole table of my aunts just screamed bingo and it just killed me. It was so funny. I was like, oh, I'm so sorry I didn't do this sooner. 
because they were just waiting on that one. After that, my my sister-in-law and my sister had set up a little photo area in the trees next to the shed. And so I took pictures with like my mom and my bridesmaids and my friends and my grandma and a few other people. And I, that's when I realized this is why photographers ask you for lists. Because I realized I got a picture with my, my grandma on my mom's side, but I didn't get a picture with my grandma on my dad's side. I didn't get a picture with my sister-in-law's at all. I just did my bridal party and like, I did, I did my bridal party, my mom and grandma, and then Jake's family. And I'm just like, oh no, like there are more people I could have taken pictures with and I just didn't because my, my sister had taken pictures the whole time. I didn't even, I, no, I got a picture with her. Um, but yeah, I'm just like, oh, I feel bad. So yeah, this is, that was a good reminder for me that I really need to make a photography list and I have to think of everybody or I'm not going to get the pictures I want because this was just us to our own devices and we didn't do well. <laughs> but yeah, the shower was great. I had such a good time. I was so worried about it because I'm not good with surprises, but it was so fun. And everyone slowly trickled out after that. And I stayed at my parents' house for another couple hours just talking to, you know, my sister-in-law, my sisters. And um, I talked to my other sister. She's engaged. And so I was talking to them about that because um, my sister is a lesbian. And so she was at, it was kind of weird because she was asking me questions like, what do you do walking down the aisle? Do we both walk down the aisle? And I was like, oh, you can do whatever you want. And I've, I've mentioned in this channel before, I read every book, every wedding book in the library, I have read it. So I, I've read a couple books about lesbian weddings. So I'm sitting here talking to my sister about like how a wedding should go. And it just felt kind of funny. And she's like, oh, I don't want to wear a dress, but I don't know what to wear. And so I was trying to look up like pantsuits and stuff to see if there's anything she liked online. <laughs> Because her, her fiancé wants to wear a dress, but my sister's not a dress person. But then she's also worried because she gets easily overheated, so she's like, well, I don't want to wear, like, you know, long pants and long sleeves. So that's that's an issue for another day, but yeah, I was having fun trying to help her out with that and talking about um, the hair trial again with my other sister and my sister-in-law and chatting with my dad and just getting catching up with everybody and having a good time. It was super fun. I didn't leave until pretty late. I didn't get home until like nine o'clock last night, which I didn't expect. And then that brings me to today. So because I am too on the ball and a little bit of a crazy person. So I mentioned I have a headache. Uh, pretty sure that's because I spent all day writing thank you cards. <laughs> I wrote 30 thank you cards today. And oh man, not looking forward to writing wedding thank you notes because that took me all day <laughs> just to write 30 of them and I'm trying to write you know like an individual response to everybody because everybody got me something different and everybody was like you know took time out of their day to come join me yeah everybody just kind of had to drive a while and so I was honestly surprised as many people showed up as they did my my mom's side of the family doesn't really show up to events so like none of them came which I sort of expected. Like, the only person who came on my mom's side was my grandma and my aunt, who's my godmother. So I expected them to come. But everyone else was my dad's side. They usually always make it to everything. And still, that was still 30 people. <laughs> but um, besides, besides my mom's side, I only had two aunts that didn't make it, which was, like, very surprising. And obviously, like, they, they sent me gifts in the mail, so I obviously wrote them thank you notes as well. But yeah, it was it was a long day of writing thank you notes. The invitations we're gonna we're gonna send out on Friday this week at some point, hopefully. So I'm trying to get that all done. Jake's gonna be a champ and send out the thank you cards tomorrow because I have one friend who lives in Japan, so I'm sending her an invitation. But yeah, at this point it's like the save the save the date's been out for a while, but like I haven't heard from her in a while and she probably won't make it. But I still wanna send her an invite, and the invite you need like a special international stamp that we don't have, so Jake has to go into the post office to do that because my work hours are literally the same as the post office hours. And obviously I was busy yesterday, so I couldn't go in, but I would like them to get out. So he's going to do me a solid. He's going to go bring that in and also drop off all the thank yous. And so later this week, I'll go and drop off all the invites. And that's like the little compromise we have going. Yeah. Oh my gosh. This was, this was a long one, but this was a long week and not always in a bad way. Like, it's, it was just, like, a lot got done, and I'm very proud of that, and I'm also exhausted, so I'm gonna leave this here. Um, if you watch all of this, oh my gosh, props to you. I hope to see you again.
oh gosh, I look like concerned. <laughs> and I hope to see you again in another video. Bye.